In the last video, we saw some diseases caused by microbes in humans. Now these microbes can actually affect other living organisms too. This includes animals and even plants. In this video, let's learn about some such diseases, starting with animals. One such example is a disease called anthrax, caused by a bacterium called Bacillus anthracis. It mainly affects livestock like cattle and sheep. The tricky problem with anthrax is that the animal might not show many symptoms but then turn very serious very quickly. But if identified in time, it can be cured with antibiotic medicines. And there are also vaccines available to prevent the spread of this disease. Now this particular bacteria has a very clever way to survive and spread. When it finds enough nutrients, it exists in a complete cellular form. But when nutrition is in shortage, they can exist in a dormant form called spores and then survive for years. Now this is just a reproductive unit of the bacteria that then gets activated once it enters an animal and thus resulting in the disease. These spores can then spread to other animals or even humans if they inhale or ingest these spores. Another disease in animals is called foot and mouth disease, which is caused by a virus. This is a very, very painful and highly contagious disease. It causes a lot of blisters in their mouth and feet, making it very hard for them to eat. As a result, they become weak. Now, unfortunately, there is no treatment or vaccine for this disease. So it is really, really important to isolate the affected animals immediately to prevent the spread. Now, let's switch gears to plants. But how do you think plants get exposed to these microorganisms? Well, we know that plants take in carbon dioxide from the air for photosynthesis, you know, the process by which they make their own food. Now, this intake of carbon dioxide happens through small openings on their leaves called stoma. Now, this is one of the ways in which microbes can enter the plant. In other cases, it can happen through seeds, from infected parents, or because they got contaminated during storage. Now, once microbes infect a crop, let's say of wheat, they fight with it for nutrition. Now, they can also cause discoloration of the fruits and leaves due to damage to the plant's organs. All of this results in bad yield. Now, let's take a look at some examples. Citrus canker, as the name suggests, affects citrus trees like lemon and orange. It is caused by a bacteria that enters through the stoma or cuts in the leaves. The bacteria can then spread by wind and water, hence transmitting the disease to more plants. The next disease is rust of wheat and like the name suggests, results in rust-like veins on the leaves of wheat plants. This is caused by a fungus that starts covering the leaf with its spores. Now, this inhibits the process of photosynthesis and leads to a smaller yield. These spores can then spread through the wind, thereby infecting other plants. They can also enter the seeds and thus pass on the disease to the next generation. And finally, we look at the disease called yellow vein mosaic of Bindi. This causes depletion of chlorophyll and results in formation of these yellow patches on its leaves. Again, this also inhibits photosynthesis and results in a very bad yield. This disease is caused by a virus that spreads from plant to plant by an insect called whitefly, which acts as a carrier for the virus. So to summarize, we saw diseases like anthrax and foot and mouth disease that affects cattle, 
we also saw some diseases in plants like citrus canker, rust of wheat and yellow vein mosaic of windy. In the next video, let's take a break from these scary harmful microbes and switch gear to look at some helpful ones. Starting with antibiotic, a life-saving medicine that cures bacterial infections.